I'm here at Nathan Phillips Square and chances are you recognize the building behind me. It's Toronto City Hall. But did you know Toronto has actually had a few different city halls? The first one brings us all the way back to the mid 1800s and where it went from there is a fascinating journey. These are Toronto's city halls. Let's take a look. This is along Queen Street, just west of Bay. And as you can see here, just to the north, that is the current city hall, which is located at Nathan Phillips Square. Nathan Phillips, by the way, was mayor of Toronto back in the 1950s and 60s and served as mayor for eight years. Now, if you've been to Toronto before, you're probably already familiar with this spot. It's where the iconic Toronto sign is located. But there are actually a few other interesting elements to note about this area. There's also a sculpture, Henry Moore's The Archer, a theater stage, and the arches that hover over the skating rink, which is a reflecting pool during the warming months, are called the Freedom Arches and actually contain a piece of the Berlin Wall. But as for City Hall itself, its design came to be from a competition back in 1957, which saw over 500 submissions. Ultimately, Viho Ravel ended up winning the contest and construction began back in 1961. The total cost of the construction ended up being around $31 million and it opened up in 1965. The council chambers are located in that circular structure in between the two curved towers. And at the top, the 27th floor was actually intended to be a restaurant but that never ended up happening. Instead, there was an observation deck, but that ultimately closed because of accessibility and safety concerns. Now that was Toronto's current city hall. Just across the street is what's referred to as Old City Hall. Although it wasn't actually the original city hall, there's even an old, old city hall, but more on that later. There's a sign out front here at the east end of the building, and you can see here that it shows it was designed by architect E.J. Lennox, and construction began in 1889 and didn't actually open for some 10 years. The total cost at the time ended up coming to about two and a half million dollars. It also goes into a bit of detail about the architecture, describing it as being in the Romanesque revival style. Just out front, there's the cenotaph, which commemorates those who lost their lives in service to Canada. And this is where you'll find the city's Remembrance Day ceremony take place. And just over here, a bit further, is the Clock Tower, which was actually the tallest building in Canada when it was constructed. And the bells first rang here on December 31st, 1900, at midnight. There's another sign over here as well, just buried under a little snow. You can see here it says York County Courthouse. So the building has also been a courthouse and the council chambers have been used as a courtroom since City Hall moved from this location. You can also see it's an historic site, which it got that designation back in 1984. But as mentioned earlier, this place may be called Old City Hall, but it wasn't actually the city's first. For that, let's head on over to Front and Jarvis. While Torontonians may know this spot as St. Lawrence Market in the second half of the 19th century, it was also the location of City Hall. This place served as City Hall from 1845 up until 1899 and was designed by architect Henry Bauer Lane. As you walk through St. Lawrence Market, you'll be able to see where the first permanent City Hall used to be. You can even get a glimpse here along Front Street of what the market used to look like by the change in the facade. Now, as the incorporation of the City of Toronto came about roughly 10 years earlier, back in 1834, a temporary spot was used by City Council, but eventually, with a growing population, the city found itself with its first permanent City Hall here at the St. Lawrence Market. So that about sums up almost two centuries of Toronto City Hall history in about five minutes. Who knows what the next century will bring. For Narcity, I'm Lance McMillan. Thanks for watching and be sure to like and subscribe to see more great content.